Has anyone ever told you that they sent you an email but you haven't received it? And you don't know actually what happened to that email? Or are you concerned that when people send to your organization's users and misspell their names or email addresses, that these emails might get lost and nobody will ever be able to get those emails again unless the senders resend them again? Um, also, are you looking for more ways to make sure that your email settings and environment is more secure and less exposed to an attack surface? Well, I guess you will need to have a catch-all email address in this case, which is going to help you save every email that is sent to your organization. And it's also it's going to help you minimize a little bit the attack services that you have in your organization. In this video, I will show you exactly how you can create a catch-all email address in your Google Workspace as well as some additional useful information. So stay with me until the end and don't forget to like the video and subscribe so that more people can find this easily. So first of all, what is a catch-all email address or what is a catch-all email rule in Google Workspace? Basically, the catch-all emails are not only specific to Google Workspace, and in fact, you can configure them in any platform and with any provider such as Office 365 or Exchange Server on-prem or any other provider or party that provide email services or email service as part of their business. Now, while technically this is something you can configure and it can be free of charge if you're using Google Workspace or if you're using Exchange or Office 365, some services might offer to give you this feature, the catch-all email address, as a paid service. That is, if you have a single account or if you would like to enable this, but they don't offer it by default, then you might pay for it so that they can enable it for you, which is somehow still fair, I think. Now, aside from the main reasons that I mentioned a moment ago, you can also utilize the catch-all email address to actually reduce the spam or the email-based attacks in a way. Uh, there are many types of spam attacks that can be done or can be executed against an organization and a domain. And one of the most dangerous ones, I would say, and one of the most serious ones is the backscatter or reverse NDR method. And to do this, basically the attacker spoofs a legitimate email address in the domain. They know that this account is existing and they know that they can spoof this email address. So basically they send a bunch of email messages, spam email messages to other destinations, whether internal in that domain or in to, to other domains. And in the sender field, they will put this spoofed email as the sender of these emails being the recipient addresses are random or non-existing or they will just intentionally put an address in the destination that does not exist. This will generate an NDR and the NDR will be sent back to the legitimate victim who is supposedly the one who sent those emails but in fact he didn't. And usually this NDR contains the original spam message plus the NDR report of course. And now the unaware user who got this email, they are unaware from where or how this email got to them. They would like to explore and find out. They would just open the attached spam email and then, you know, the attackers would have got access to or they achieved part of their targets, which is delivering that spam or suspicious or malicious email message to the intended destination. Now, this type of attack can be executed against an entire organization and at full scale, it will be large and it will target many users, a lot of users, and it will be a very serious issue for you to handle and worry about. So one of the ways to fix this is to disable the NDRs completely from your domain. Basically, not every email provider will allow you to disable the NDRs. You can do this in Office 365 and Exchange Server, but unfortunately you cannot do this in Google Workspace. So the other way for you to fix this or work around it is to create a catch-all email address and a catch-all email rule to examine each message received by the catch-all email or triggered by the catch-all rule that you will be creating. 
So if you want to create a catch all email rule or a catch all email address in your Google workspace, you can do it in two ways. Of course, if you want to make it an actual account, then you have to create the user account or the mailbox before. You can use a group, I think as well, it will work, but you need a destination. And both of these methods are done from the settings of the Gmail interface. So if you go to the apps in the admin console, in the apps, you go to Google Workspace and you go to Gmail. I will be showing you now how you can do it with the two methods, starting with the default routing. So the default routing is the one that will affect the whole domain. It will not allow you to create exceptions or it will not allow you to, to scoop or anything. Of course, you can scoop through the affected addresses or the criteria, but then you need to do it through a regular expression, which is not a big thing, actually. You can just do it easily. And to do this, you go to default routing. In the default routing, you go to add another rule. Then in the first point here, specify envelope recipients to match. You want to set it to all recipients. Now you can have any of these, of course, but then I want to create a catch all rule. So you say all recipients. There is another thing that I would like to do and I like to do in every rule that I create, which is add XGM original to header so that I will know the original address that this email was sent to before it's being rewritten. And if you want to prepend a custom subject or anything, then you can do it here. But again, it's up to you. Maybe you can do it like catch all or something. You know, just for you to know that this is a catch-all address or a catch-all email that was triggered by this rule. If you want, I don't want to do this. Then the option that you want to select here is the envelope recipient, change envelope recipient. And again, it's up to your scenario here. So you can say replace a recipient. You can completely change the destination address. You can actually also replace the username part, which is the one before the ad, or replace the domain part if you have multiple domains in your Google Workspace. So for example, here we can do replace domain or actually replace recipient. And when I do something like this, now of course you should not do it to the admin. You should do it to a specific account that is dedicated for this. And once you set your account and once you set the recipient, you need to go to the bottom of this and make sure that you are selecting the perform this action only on non-recognized addresses. And the reason for this is you, you can use this as a way of split delivery as well if you're doing a migration or a project. So you need to route the emails that are addressed to people that are not on Google Workspace to other email destination. Or if you're doing dual delivery, then you will need to route the email to both destinations, the old email service that you're using, the legacy email service that you're using, and to Google Workspace. But in this case, in the case of catch all address, we need to do it for all of the non-recognized addresses, and we need to do the replacement of the recipient or the envelope recipient. Once you do this, then you do save. And that's it. The rule has been created. Now, if you want to do it from the email settings or from the Gmail routing settings, you need to go back to settings for Gmail. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will find the routing option. If you go inside, then you will see the default routing or just routing it's called here. So we need to add another rule. And again, you just do a default name. So I will do something like default catch all and then we need to specify the direction of the email that will be affected by this rule so we want to stop the emails that are coming to our domain whether internally or from the internet and the reason we want to do this is if one of our users got attacked by this attack then part of the targets of this attack might be internal users as well or some addresses in our domain whether they exist or not and if the email was sent from within the domain then this will be considered an internal receiving and we need to affect it also by this rule 
So again, we selected the direction of the message, which is inbound from the internet and internal receiving. And then the action, we have the same options here. So we can add the XGM original to, and we can also change the envelope recipient to whatever we want. And then if you go to the bottom, there is a very important option that you need to do. Otherwise, this rule will not be considered as a catch all address or a catch all rule which is in the show options, you have to select the unrecognized catch all from the account types and you have to uncheck the users. So if you do this, then this rule will be triggered whenever any email message is sent to any address in the domain that does not exist, whether this address is a user address or a group address, but at the end, it will be just an unrecognized address and you need to tell Google Workspace to treat it or you need to tell this rule to process this type of email through this option. Now, there are some other stuff that you can do with this, basically changing the route and rerouting those to a different destination and then examine them there or probably add some additional headers and I'm not, I haven't tested this, but maybe you can create a compliance rule and put all of the messages that match this rule in a quarantine so that you can then open that quarantine and examine these messages. But the options here are flexible. You have a lot of stuff to do and you can do it in multiple ways. So I hope that by now you know the importance of a catch all email address and that you are also aware of how to create one if you don't have one already. Please leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And also please don't forget to like the video and subscribe and hit that bell button so that you can get notified of new content. And also please check out my course on Udemy Google Workspace Admin, the complete course. This is a full comprehensive course that will dive very deep with you in all of the details and it will give you all of the info and knowledge that you will need to manage your Google Workspace account and domain, such as topics about user management, Gmail and security management, and Google Drive and Google Vault as well. You can get it through the link in the video description with a discounted price as well. So finally, thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe wherever you are.